In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God has caused the light to shine in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our lips, O Lord, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Saturday. Looks like a pretty chilly Saturday morning today. Uh, hopefully these prayers will help you on the day that lies ahead of you and give you some comfort and a space to uh, pray and think. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be, will be raised above the hills and all of the nations will flock to it. Many peoples will come and they will say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, that we may be taught the ways of the Lord and may walk in the right paths. From the mountain of the Lord shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The Lord will judge between the nations and settle disputes for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation nor never again prepare for war. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The psalm this morning is Psalm number 32. Blessed are those whose offences are forgiven, whose sin has been put away. Blessed are those to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I held back from confessing my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night, I was dried up and withered, as it were, by drought in summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my sins to the Lord, and so you forgave the wickedness of my sin. Therefore, let all those that are faithful pray to you in a time of trouble, when great flood waters rises, and that shall not come near them. You are a place to hide me in, you will preserve me from trouble, you will surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will teach you and guide you in the way you should go. I will keep you under my eye and give you counsel. Be not like horse or mule, which have no understanding, whose course must be checked with bit and bridle. Many pains are in store for the wicked, but whoever trusts in the Lord is surrounded by steadfast love. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all you that are upright in heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 7, beginning at the 8th verse. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Perform a wonder, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did as the Lord had commanded. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, excuse me, no, I'm not, uh, Let's start that sentence again. Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, the magicians of Egypt, did the same as their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff, and they became snakes. But Aaron's staff swallowed up theirs. Still, Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning, as he is going out to the water, stand at the river bank to meet him, and take in your hand the staff that was turned into a snake. 
say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to say to you, Let my people go, so that they may worship me in the wilderness. But until now you have not listened. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. See, with the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water that is in the Nile, and it shall be turned to blood. The fish in the river shall die, and the river itself shall stink, and the Egyptians shall be unable to drink water from the Nile. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over its rivers, its canals, and its ponds, and all its pools of water, so that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout the whole land of Egypt, even in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded. In the sight of Pharaoh and his officials, he lifted up the staff and struck the water in the river. And all the water in the river had turned to blood. And the fish in the river died. The river stank so that the Egyptians could not drink its water. And there was blood throughout the whole land of Egypt. But the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts, so Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Pharaoh turned and went into his house, and he did not take even this to heart. And all the Egyptians had to dig along the Nile for water to drink, for they could not drink the water of the river. Seven days passed after the Lord had struck the Nile. The second reading comes from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen and made was, was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through this, he received approval as righteous, God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was given, was taken, so that he did not experience death, and he was not found because God had taken him. For it was attested before he was taken away that he had pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, for whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning and built an ark to save his house, his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir an heir to the righteous that is in, ex in accordance with faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an, as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, as the and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. 
hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty and the Lamb. The city has no need of sun or moon to shine upon it, for the glory of God illuminates it, and the Lamb is its light. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and the servants of God shall worship before the throne. They shall see God face to face, and bear the name of their God upon their foreheads. There shall be no more there shall be no more night, nor will they need the lamp of light, the light of lamp or sun. As the Lord God will give them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. To the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour, glory and might, for ever and ever. Amen. Oh, let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of healing and sight, we long to see with eyes of faith. Heal all that blinds us, renew our vision and grant us to see afresh all that you are doing. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving, wherever we are, whatever it costs, or as long as it takes, wherever you call us. O oh God, help us to trust you. Help us to know that you are with us. Help us to believe that nothing can separate us from your love revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, the wellspring of life, pour into our hearts the living water of your grace that, refreshed by you, we may live this day in steadfast reliance on the strength you give through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us here at St Michael and All Angels for morning prayer. Um, I hope you can join us as we celebrate the Mass at 12.35 today. May the words that we say together, the prayers that we pray together, uh, all give us hope and encouragement and comfort at this time of isolation. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you all.